Welcome to a new episode at Economics Design. At Economics Design, we focus all on fundamentals. How protocols work, how protocols behave, and how do you analyze the robustness of these protocols. Today, we are talking about UST, the stablecoin in the Terra network. This stablecoin has been talked about for a very long time. A lot of people are requesting for this video, so I'm finally releasing the video. This stablecoin is an algo stablecoin that is native to the Terra blockchain. Today, we're going to dive all into this protocol. We're going to cover a few things today. What is UST? How the stablecoin is created? How does it maintain stability? The different statistics of UST? The application in the Terra ecosystem? And concluding with some opinions and thoughts. Okay, firstly, UST is not Luna. Luna is the native token where users have to stake Luna to be a validator in the Terra blockchain, and UST is just a stable coin. Both of them exist on the Terra ecosystem, but they are not the same. So let's look deeper to understand how do they interact with each other and how are they affected by each other. Remember, when we talk about stable coins, we classify them into four different categories. The first one is what is the mechanism, the second is the collateral type, the third is what is it packed to, and the fourth is the collateral amount. This is an algo stablecoin. So the mechanism is algorithmic. It has two tokens, which is Terra and UST, and it is not reserve based. So it's completely 100% algorithmic. It doesn't have any collateral, as you can imagine. It is packed to one US dollar and it doesn't have any collateral reserve. Now, there is some relationship with Terra. So let's dive deeper into it. Because yes, they're all working in the Terra ecosystem, but how is it linked to Luna then? If it's not backed by anything, how is it linked to this token? Well, some people like to say that the UST is backed by Luna. No, no, it's not. Okay, now it's a bit confusing, right? Because a lot of people think that UST is backed by Luna, but that's not true. When we talk about an asset being backed by reserves, what we're talking about over here is that the asset is backed by some form of asset that it's not created from within the system. So it could be backed by US dollars in the bank, it could be backed by actual gold, it could be backed by grains and rice, it could be backed by barrels of oil, it could be backed by BTC or ETH, it doesn't matter because it's an asset created outside of the ecosystem. Whereas here we're talking about algorithmic because the algorithm changes when the price of Luna and the price of Terra could affect each other. So this is what we're talking about in the algorithmic stablecoin. So Luna is used in the reserve and it's used to maintain price stability. It's not to enforce price stability, but it's used to maintain price stability. At the same time, Luna is not considered a traditional collateral, so that's why we are not considering this as a collateral-backed asset. It is 100% algorithmic. So then, how is UST created? How do we create this stablecoin called UST? Well, firstly, we have to know that there are two tokens. There's UST and there's the Luna token. So when UST is less than a dollar, then what do people do? When it's less than a dollar, so UST is like 90 cents. It's supposed to be a dollar, but it's now 90 cents because of whatever forces. What do you do? You take your UST, you go to the system, you go to Terra's network and you say, guys, I don't want this UST anymore because it dropped by 10% and I don't want that. Instead, give me Luna instead. I want to exchange it for Luna. The system will always value UST at $1. So you give it to the system and then you create Luna. And that's how you mint Luna and you destroy UST. When you destroy UST, supply goes down, value of the remaining UST goes up. That's the relationship. And when UST is above $1, you go and buy Luna from somewhere or you have Luna, then you go to the system and say, guys, I want to get UST out. So you give Luna and then they will give you UST. Then you go to the open market and then you sell UST at maybe $1.10 instead of a dollar, but you get it for a dollar. So that's how it works. That's how the internal mechanism works to balance the price of UST. So internally, they will always value UST at $1. And this is an algorithmic system because the value of UST and the value of Luna is determined by outside markets, but internally, it will always value UST at $1. And it will value Luna at whatever the price it is. So how does it maintain stability? How is the stability of UST being determined considering that it's an algorithmic stablecoin? If it's on-chain or it's reserve-backed, then you can pretty much determine it based on the value of your collaterals. But if it's algorithmic, it's not backed by anything, how do you determine the stability of it? Well, there are three main factors to affect the stability of UST. There is the demand of UST, there is the value of Luna, and there is the utility of Luna. 
So well, when we talk about the demand of UST, we're talking about how people are using UST, are demanding UST. As more people demand UST, more people want to use UST in terms of transactions because it's a stable coin, whatever reason you want to use, maybe for staking or something, then that definitely helped to increase the price stability of UST. Because more people demand it, more velocity of the tokens exchanging hands, then it increases the price stability of UST. At the same time, we have the value of Luna affecting this entire system because it is not backed by Luna. But Luna, by staking Luna, by having Luna in the ecosystem, it helps to maintain the stability of UST. So if UST rises or falls, you can always mint or burn Luna as and when you want. So the value of Luna will help greatly to help maintain the stability of UST. If Luna prices fall too much and UST also falls a lot, then having Luna as the stability mechanism is not going to be that robust because the prices are very volatile there too. So the value of Luna will affect the stability of UST. And the other one is the utility of Luna. Now, that's something that I want to dive a little bit further in. So Luna is the, think of Luna as the currency for the Terra protocol. So Terra is a blockchain on its own. So if you want to do any transactions, you want to validate your transactions, you need to validate it somewhere. It's not going to be the Ethereum blockchain or Bitcoin blockchain because these are different systems. So you need the Luna blockchain to verify and to validate your transactions. In this system, then you need to pay validators something and validators need to stake something. So what they're staking is the Luna token, L-U-N-A, Luna. So if I want to be a validator to validate all your transactions, I'm not going to be MasterCard or I'm not going to be Visa. All I need to do is to hold some Luna tokens and then I can be a validator. The system will run different stuff to verify and then that transaction will be in the blockchain. That's how all blockchains work. So you need to hold Luna tokens. Now, this is where the utility of Luna tokens come in. Because Luna holders, because you're a validator, you're working. You're working to validate these transactions. You need to pay for work done. So how do you pay for work done? For any transaction that happens, 0.1 to 1% of the total amount is basically the transaction fees. So when you trade more and when people transact more using UST or using any of these tokens, then it increases the amount of validation to be done, increases the amount of transactions, hence increases the transaction fees. So the utility of holding Luna now, it's not just about validating transactions, but the utility of holding Luna is for you to earn income because you're working as a validator. This is where the relationship of Luna and USD comes in. Because if you're just going to trade Luna for UST and there is no utility for UST, there is no value in UST, UST is just there to be a secondary token to cushion the volatility of UST, that's not a good system. But if Luna is used for something real good for validating transactions and at the same time you get to earn the returns based on Luna, based on the work done by Luna, that's a good system. Because in that system, Luna is actually getting work done. Luna is accruing future cash flow, which is the future transaction fees, and it accrues to the Luna token holder. And so when UST is going up or down, it's very volatile, you can always exchange it for Luna, and there's real utility in Luna. So Luna's demand will be greatly dependent on the applications built on Terra. More applications built on Terra, higher value of Luna, higher stability of UST. That's the general picture. So let's look at some statistics. These are statistics that it's done since UST started all the way to March this year. So Q1. Right now, UST has a market cap of $2 billion. That's a lot of money. And you can see that every day there's about 20K daily transactions, of which 0.1 to 1% is in transaction fees. So that's a lot of different transactions that will be accrued to these Luna token holders. And what I want to see in the statistics of stablecoins is how easy it is to pack to $1. So we look at all the different data and all the different dates in which UST is trading. And I give a range of about plus minus 5%. So if it's within 95 cents to $1.05, I consider that stable. You can always change this when you're doing your own research. And you can see that of the entire timeline, only 1% is within that price range, which, you know, it's good or bad. It's up to you to decide. The higher the percentage, the better. What are the two other options then? When price is above $1.05, and when price is below 95 cents. So you can see that 25% of the time, it's above $1.05. And 74% of the time, it's actually below 95 cents. When you're looking at the statistics of stable coins, ideally, you want the highest percentage at the 1% range because it's stable. That's the whole point, it's a stable coin. But as a secondary option, if it has a very low range 
of the $1 stability. What you want to look at is to compare the proportion or the frequency of it being higher than $1.05 and lower than $0.95. If the price is being pegged at higher than $1.05, that's a lot better. Right now, we see the chart. The orange is much less than the dark blue. Ideally, you want the orange to be much greater than the dark blue. So these are some statistics to think about and to check out when you're looking at stable coins. Now, let's talk about the Terra ecosystem because the utility of USD, the demand of USD is very much dependent on the Terra ecosystem. And UST is very interesting because UST or stablecoins in the Terra network is not only used on the on-chain ecosystem, it's also used in the off-chain ecosystem. So Terra has signed with a lot of different Korean companies and Korean shops to be accepting the stable Korean won or the stable UST in the market. So it is not only dependent on on-chain demand, but off-chain demand as well. So in general, that's a good sign. That's a good thing. But let's move on to the on-chain world because that's where most of the transactions will happen. And you can see that in its core, you have Mirror protocol, you have Anchor protocol. These are the main protocols in the Terra ecosystem. These protocols, they work using UST as collaterals. When you're using the Mirror protocol or using Anchor protocol, you will need UST to be your collateral, to be minting whatever assets to be trading. So UST now has very much greater utility in the entire Terra ecosystem as a whole, because to use any of these protocols, you want to use them as a real user, as a beginning user, then you need to use UST. So in that case, the whole idea of a stablecoin is that it needs to have utility. Remember, it needs to have demand for the UST, for this coin, the stablecoin, for it to have price stability. Otherwise, if no one is using it, everyone is just transacting with the smart contract or transacting with Uniswap, that is not real utility. What Terra is building is all these different other applications to increase the utility of UST. So that gives you a general idea and general big range of what UST is and how it interacts with the Terra ecosystem. Now I want to give some opinions and thoughts to make some sense of whatever I've mentioned of UST. So firstly, we talk about rebase. Now, when we are talking about algo stable coins, or we're talking about stable coins in general, a very, very important aspect is how it rebases and what is this rebase loop. Rebasing will always happen because that's how algorithmic stable coins work. When you're analyzing rebase, what you want to look at is, is that a positive rebase loop? Is that a negative rebase loop? And how long is the duration of rebase? A positive rebase loop is when prices go down, they have different mechanisms to allow prices to go up again. Negative rebase loop is where prices go down and then continues falling down. So that's not so good. You want a positive rebase loop. So when prices goes down, the mechanism allows the price to go up again. That's how it maintains its stability. Also, you want to see how long is the duration of rebasing. The longest time in which prices are within that range of plus minus 5%, so 95 cents to $1.05, it's nine days in the Terra ecosystem. In general, the longer, the better. So when we look at rebasing, what we want to understand as well is understand the mechanism, the mechanism to allow prices to be a positive rebase. So we look at how is the protocol creating demand on chain and off chain. As I mentioned on chain, you have these sellers and they are a little bit more independent to whatever the on chain market is doing. So that's good. You decentralize, diversify your risk. That's the off chain world. The on chain world, you're creating demand by having other protocols using the token to be creating different kinds of protocols or different kinds of assets on anchor protocol and mirror protocol. So that helps to create positive rebase. So one of the pitfalls in algo stable coins, as I mentioned, is this negative rebase loop and price action. This is where ESD and DSD failed so badly because the secondary token that they have in the ecosystem is not doing anything. Whereas in Luna, it's slightly different because the Luna token is actually doing something for the ecosystem. The second thing is I want to make the comparison of UST and Luna similar to gas and ETH. On the Ethereum network, you need to hold ETH in your wallet and then it'll be exchanged to gas and allows you to change and transact. How I compare, how I see Terra Network is that your gas fees is basically Luna and your ETH, the ETH used as collaterals in Maker, the ETH used in trading and exchanges, the main currency to exchange in the ecosystem ETH is basically UST in Terra's network. So this is how I see where Terra can get more utility than Ethereum because in the Terra ecosystem, the main asset you use to transact is UST, which is a stable coin compared to ETH. Yes, ETH prices fluctuate a lot. ETH prices increase and decrease based on the demand of ETH and the demand of the ecosystem. But ETH is not a good value of exchange because it fluctuates so much. 
On the other hand, UST is fixed. You can use UST in Anchor, you can use UST in Mirror, and that allows for much easier transactions and much easier way of using the different protocols in the Terra ecosystem. So in that case, looking at this comparison, the Terra network is a little bit more robust, a little bit easier to use than Ethereum. Thirdly is the fees paid to Luna holders. So if you look at a game theory analysis, when prices of USD falls, then people are supposed to trade and exchange for Luna. And what Luna is, is basically the future cash flow and investment that the entire protocol will create. When USD is less than $1, you're basically buying Luna at a discount and this Luna entitles you to future cash flow by the ecosystem. So I think in general, that's a pretty good deal. Now, this is where the problem lies. Remember, I told you about the feedback loop. In general, that's good in theory. But one of the potential flaws in this negative feedback loop is that when prices of USD goes down, people change it for Luna. And if everyone is just holding Luna and not doing anything, then that doesn't accrue any future cash flow to Luna holders. So this is something to bear in mind. And what the ecosystem is doing is to build a lot of other protocols from within and getting third party developers to build all these different applications to increase the utility and transactions in the system, hence increase the potential cash flow of Luna holders. And this will mitigate this negative feedback loop. And lastly, it's the burning of Luna. Right now, the supply of Luna and USD is a little bit more elastic in which you can just burn and mint anytime. And you're supposed to burn Luna to mint USD. Right now, the Luna is not burnt. It just goes back into the ecosystem that will be redistributed to Luna holders. And there is a proposal that came out a few weeks ago by Do Kwon. Great guy, very smart. Definitely go check him out. And what he recommended is to burn this Luna instead of just keeping the treasury to be redistributed. And I absolutely agree with him because this would definitely mitigate the negative feedback loop that we're talking about. So the infinite minting of Luna and UST is done, the elasticity is done to allow balance to be maintained. However, when UST is above a dollar, this is where Luna shouldn't be circulated back into the system and should be burnt. This helps to maintain a positive feedback loop and reduce the negative impact of the ecosystem. So that's it for today. I hope that gives you some insights to what Luna is and what Terra is. If you're interested in more discussions like this, join us on our Discord or follow us on Twitter for any updates. And lastly, check out the book, book.economicdesign.com. That's where you can find a lot more information and a lot more details, nerdy details about what we've talked about and how we go about analyzing because fundamentals are so important in this space. Till then, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!